Hello and welcome. I am Sachin Brahme with Avaya Serviceability Engineering. In this video, we'll talk about how to set up an infinite job in Avaya Proactive Contact. With infinite job, you can add new records to the running job itself. It's mostly used in businesses where there is no specific time of receiving the calling data. That is, you may keep getting the new data throughout the day in parts. So we'll look at how we can set up the infinite job and as you see on my screen, I have an editor application already open. I go into the calling list section. I click on the calling lists and then I get displayed the available calling lists that I have in my system currently. Now, if I want to create a new calling list, I can do that or I can even choose one of these, the available calling list to make that into an infinite calling list. So let me choose list 10. So I'll do a right click on this and click on calling list details. And as you can see, the calling list details have appeared on the right hand side on my screen. So you will see an infinite job checkbox here. Currently it is unchecked. And to convert this into an infinite calling list, you have to check the checkbox. So I will check this checkbox and you can see it is then asking me for some values for these different fields. For key for removing duplicate records, I will select a field from the available fields here. I'll use the account number as the unique identifier. Similarly, for key for indexing records, I will still choose account number. And these would be probably the same that you would have used for your list 10 itself. For key for indexing do not call processing, again, I can choose the same unique identifier. Then you come to the next section that is late list. It is recommended that for the infinite section, you keep the late list checkbox unchecked because if you check this checkbox, it will run the late list late mark during the infinite download. And that would mean there is a risk of overwriting the current day's calling data by the data in the old calling list. That is the list 10.old for our example. So we'll keep this box as unchecked here. The next setting is the sort newly downloaded records. This is the resort function which is applied to the complete calling list after the new set of records are appended into the original calling list. So if you check this checkbox, it will ask you for the field on which you have to do the resort. So I'll choose my field from here. Let me choose as balance. And now we have completed the infinite configuration. When this is done, I click on save. And then it asks me whether I want to save it in pending or in progress. I'll choose pending and then click OK. These changes will take effect after a midnight maintenance cycle. That is when the pending to active script runs. Now let me just quickly tell you how these changes will become active. I have logged on to the system as an admin user. I will go into the staging directory. I'll see the pending. I'll do ls minus l here you will see the list 10 configuration have reached the pending directory. I will cd into the list CFG directory. Do ls minus L. And I see the list 10.app directory here. I'll cd into that. And I find that the list 10 configurations which were altered from the editor application they have reached here. I'm interested in the .dnld file. I'll do a cat on this file. And at the bottom you can see there is this infinite section and these settings have actually come because of the changes that we just did through the editor. Now when the pending to active script runs during the maintenance cycle, it will actually read these settings and create the .app folder for the infinite configuration also. So let me do the pending to active from the command line itself. I'll run pending to active. Let me just go out of this directory and then go back into lists directory. And then I can cd into app underscore list 10 dot app. This directory has just got created after the pending to active script was run. If I do a ls minus l here, you will see these new files created in here. So these are the infinite configuration files created when you made the changes through the editor for a particular calling list. Apart from this, the job and the call selection files would have also got created. Let me show you where they are. I'll go into the job directory. 
do ls minus l and look for infinity files i'll see that infinity 10 job has just got created if i run a date command i'll see close to the timestamp on the infinity 10 job which just got created similarly for the call selection file i'll go to call cell directory do ls minus l on infinity files i'll see infinity 10.s again with the same timestamp so these files just got created when I saved the changes from the editor application. Now coming back to the editor application again, if I go into the selections, I'll see infinity 10 created and you can see the selection type as infinite because this is an infinite call selection. If I go into the jobs, I'll see the infinity 10 job created here. And in the job settings, you must make sure that the record selection file name is set to the infinity 10 selection and the outbound calling list is obviously list 10 here. There's another parameter in the outbound processing, the shutdown job when no more calls remain. This checkbox should be kept unchecked because you do not want the job to shut down by itself. You need the job to keep running so that new records that come as a part of the infinite download, they are appended successfully. So now that we have created the infinite configuration, let's talk about how it would work. There are three important steps to it. First, you should do a regular download of the calling list. That is, first download of the day should be a regular download. Then you run your infinity record selection on that list and start your infinite job. The third one would be to run the infinite download. Now you can do this either once or twice or as many times as you like from either the system administrator menu or you can put a scheduler entry to run that automatically from the cron tab. Let's see how that is done. So for this, on the editor application, I am under the schedule section. I've clicked on the activities, and now I'll choose to create a new activity. It opens up the new schedule activity wizard. I'll click next. I will choose file transfer for a list download that is. I'll give a short description. So I've given the description as first download for list 10. The activity details is set to download because we are going to download the list and I'll choose the list as list 10. The first download of the day should be a regular download so we have chosen list 10 here. I'll click next. It asks me what time do I want to start this. Let me start this at 7 a.m. and I'll keep it as daily. I'll click finish. So if my file transfer, first download for list 10 of the day has been scheduled at 7 a.m. So this was the first download of the day that we scheduled. You can also schedule your first selection of the day that is infinity 10 to run from the cron tab. For this demo, we will only look at scheduling the infinite download. I'll click on new activity wizard. I'll click next. I'll choose the file transfer again, give a description as infinity download for list 10 and choose my list as app list 10 itself because this is going to be an infinite download. Click on next and then it asks me the start time and now since I want it to be an hourly repetition because it's going to be an infinite download, it will keep looking for the raw files at equal intervals. I'll check on hourly repetition. As start time, I'll keep it as 8 a.m. End time, I can keep it as maybe like 9 p.m. And the repetition for the download, I'll keep it as one hour. I'll make it daily and then I finish. So you can see there are two schedules now. One is the first download of the day. And the second one is the infinite download that happens on an hourly basis. And as discussed earlier, for the record selection, the first selection of the day should be run either through the cron tab or you can run it manually and then you start the job. And the subsequent record selections will be run automatically when the infinite download runs at an hourly basis. So this concludes our demonstration on how to set up an infinite job. Thank you for watching this video. For any questions or feedback, you may write to us at mentor at or at mentor on Twitter.